Today I'm going to show you how to identify a CPU bottleneck in iRacing. A CPU bottleneck occurs when the CPU is unable to keep up with the demands of the workload being placed on it. In PC gaming specifically, it is when the CPU cannot feed information to the GPU fast enough to keep the GPU running at its full potential. This can happen for a variety of reasons, including inadequate processing power, poorly optimized code, or mismatched hardware configurations. Sim racing titles are especially demanding on the CPU because they use advanced physics and graphics algorithms to provide a high level of realism. iRacing in particular suffers from another problem, which is the aging platform it was built on. First released in 2008, iRacing is built on a clunky engine that is not optimized for modern hardware. The game does not utilize the power of multi-threading on today's multi-core processors because they did not exist when the game was designed. This forces the processor to max out a small number of cores while the rest sit idle. The most common problem associated with a CPU bottleneck is experiencing frame drops or stuttering during a CPU intensive part of the game. In my case, I would experience huge slowdowns during pack racing at tracks like Daytona and Talladega with large fields of 20 or more players. My problem first originated when I upgraded to a 1440p monitor. I soon realized my RTX 2060 was struggling to stay over 60 frames per second, so I decided to upgrade to an RTX 3080. While this was a huge upgrade, I was confused why my $900 GPU would struggle in ways that I hadn't previously seen with my old hardware. The high power of my new GPU exposed the weakness of my system. The Ryzen 5 3600 could no longer keep up in demanding situations. The best way to identify a CPU bottleneck is with a performance monitoring tool like Riva Statistics Server and Hardware Info 64. These tools can show you how hard the different components are being used and help you identify the weakness leading to your slowdown. As you can see here in Hardware Info, the starts of these races put a huge load on the CPU. You can see here that only one core is being utilized and is nearly maxed out at 100%. Look at these other cores that have almost zero utilization. As I move around behind this large field of cars, you could see the frames drop below 60 frames per second, causing a visual slowdown that is very distracting. Check your frames per second by either using the built-in counter on iRacing or using a third-party software. The easiest way to do this is to load a race with a full grid of AI vehicles. Keep an eye on the counter at the beginning of the race. Now compare it to when the cars are more spread out and when you are by yourself. If the R bar is maxed out and red, that means the CPU is at its limits. If you are experiencing this issue, you could try turning down some of the more CPU dependent graphical settings. Turning down things like the crowd, pit boxes, and how many cars are rendered can help but may hinder your overall experience. The only guaranteed way to resolve this issue is to upgrade your CPU. I solved my problem by upgrading to a Ryzen 7 5700X. I was able to get it on sale for $200 and after selling my 3600, the net cost of the upgrade was only $100. The AM4 platform offers great upgradability and I highly recommend taking advantage of this if you are on an AMD system. Games like iRacing and ACC run flawlessly now that I am able to unlock the full potential of my RTX 3080. I rarely drop below 90 frames per second now, even at the start of a race with a full grid. I commonly see people post in sim racing groups online, wondering why their new GPU is not performing as well as they expected. My advice to you is to plan your upgrades accordingly. If you are looking to upgrade to an ultra-wide monitor or a triple screen setup, understand that you will likely need to upgrade your graphics card. Depending on how powerful you go, you may also need to upgrade your processor to avoid a bottleneck. I recommend that if you have a 6-core CPU from the last few generations, like a Ryzen 5 3600 or an i5-10400, 
that you avoid going more powerful than an RTX 3070 or RX 6700 XT. If you're planning to go with a 3080 or higher, I'd recommend at least a 5700X or a 12600K. I hope this information was useful and will keep your system bottleneck free. Thank you for watching.